What happens if we create a perfect pool that allows us to simulate ideal conditions that only occur once every millions of years in nature? Well, we create a wave singularity, an infinitesimally small point in space where suddenly a tremendous amount of water accumulates. Since it doesn't fit, it's forced to catapult upwards. All the energy carried by the huge circular wave has been concentrated at a single point and used to launch the water upwards. But nature isn't perfect, as it is a product of chance. It's possible that in the entire history of the planet's oceans, a wave singularity like this has never occurred, because the circular precision and timing have to be almost perfect for this phenomenon to occur. However, every so often, something very close and similar to the singularity and much more terrifying occurs, the monstrous waves. Until recently, monster waves were considered exaggerations by sailors, pseudoscientific talk that went no further than legends. Stories were heard of almost vertical walls of water, 50 meters high that suddenly rose in the calmest sea and disappeared within seconds, destroying everything in their path. But evidence was almost non-existent. Very few sailors claim to have seen waves with these monstrous characteristics, and in fact, this is why it has taken so long to prove their existence. Because until a few years ago, the price of seeing a monster wave was often death. And I'm not talking about small fishing boats disappearing in a storm. I'm talking about the wreck of the MS München, a German cargo ship pioneer in its time, one of the first to have been designed to be indestructible. In 1978, it was in the middle of the Atlantic on its traditional route between Europe and the USA. On the night of December 12th, it entered a storm with somewhat rough conditions, but conditions for which the cargo ship had been designed to withstand without problems. It notified nearby ships and continued sailing with relative ease for a few hours, until suddenly, the cargo ship went silent forever. Nothing more was known about the MS Munchen. In the following days, fleets of European and North American planes flew over the area while dozens of nearby ships canceled their routes and came to help. But they found nothing except a lifeboat that belonged to the MS Munchen. It had been torn from the cargo ship with force, as it was still attached to the metal arms from which it originally hung, which were also very deformed. Only a tremendous force could have torn the boat off in this way, which, by the way, when it left Germany, was located 20 meters high on the top part of the cargo ship. Something very big, sudden, and especially very strong swallowed the MS Munchen that night. Today, it is believed to have been a monster wave in the ocean under very bad conditions. When strong wind has been blowing for almost three days, waves of about 15 meters can occur. Sometimes when these conditions persist for a long time or there is a hurricane, there are exceptions that exceed this figure. But monster waves, we know, can reach 48 meters. Until recently, we thought they were fantasy, so all their research is very recent. We don't know how high they can go. Almost every ship that encountered a monster wave sank forever. Very few managed to survive and reach port. Despite the hulls of the ship showing clear signs that something terrible had hit them, they were judged with disbelief by the rest of the people who had not witnessed the near disaster, skeptical of the idea that water could cause this in the sturdy metal of the ships. But everything changed on January 1st, 1995, just before I was born, by the way, although this is somewhat irrelevant to what we were discussing. The case is that on the first night of the year, a Norwegian platform in the North Sea called Draupner detected the first monster wave in recorded history by an instrument that survives to tell the tale. That day, there was a bit of bad sea with waves reaching five meters high, nothing out of the ordinary. And suddenly, out of nowhere, came the wave almost 20 meters high, solitary and monstrous. It did not reach the highest part of the platform, so while it suffered damage from that day on, the scientific community accepted the existence of these waves which, although very rare, seem to plague our oceans, posing an almost mortal danger to any ship that gets in their way. But where do these monsters come from? Remember the video at the beginning, the one about the wave singularity, the formation of monster waves is very similar. They occur when a lot of energy is accumulated in a wave, not at a point in their case. For this to happen, what in physics is called constructive wave interference must occur, or in other words, that the waves add up either because they have different speeds or because they collide at a very specific angle. If you've ever bathed on a beach with sandbanks or tide, you might have seen many monster waves form as the waves from different directions that form on the beach collide. Well, if you add powerful sea currents, storm winds, and already giant waves to the equation, you get that every so often chance creates monstrous, unpredictable anomalies. 
This is something key to understanding these waves. Their main feature is that they are characterized by having a height that stands out far above the average of the rest of the waves in the sea at that moment. So, monster waves can occur that are not so dangerous, 15 meters, 10 maybe, but that come out of a calm sea with waves of at most one or two meters in height. This is what makes them so dangerous. They arise out of nowhere without warning, in seas that would not seem dangerous, and if the sea is already somewhat dangerous in itself, they can be extremely lethal. What you are seeing is a simulation of one of the ways monster waves form through the accumulation of small waves that eat each other up due to differences in speed. Once again, this is something very rare that can occur in the randomness and chaos of nature in the oceans. But when it does, it creates something terrifying, a monster capable of sinking any ship. And it's not a figure of speech or a dramatization. Apart from their enormous height, whose range we still do not know for sure, what makes these waves so dangerous are three factors. First, their geometry, much more vertical than that of a normal wave. So a normal ship cannot surf but goes inside it and splits in two, collapsing under its own weight. Second, their spontaneity, as they last a few minutes or even seconds. This makes them appear out of nowhere when the singularity occurs, becoming completely unpredictable and inevitable. And third, and most importantly, their incredible force. A standard, non-monster big wave thought to exist of normal origin can exert a force of 59 kilopascals. Ships all over the world are designed to withstand up to 150 kilopascals. That's why the MS Munchen was considered indestructible, as are all the ships that today sail the most dangerous seas on the planet. But monster zones exert forces of 980 kilopascals. The MS Munchen was not sunk little by little like the Titanic, it was surely destroyed and swallowed by the ocean instantly. So far, only two people have recorded monster waves and have been able to survive to reach port and share it. The first, unfortunately of poor quality as you are seeing, corresponds to the Alliance Truth in the Bering Sea, which encountered a modest monster wave of 18 meters. They almost do not explain it. They suffered widespread damage to the hull, loss of power, and the engine stopped. Fortunately, the captain's skill managed to prevent the other waves from sinking the ship completely, and they managed to fix the engines and return to port before the ship sank completely. The second video belongs to the Pin Coral, a fairly large Maltese tanker ship sailing through the waters of the Bay of Biscay north of Spain. The seas were choppy but not much more. Suddenly they encountered this wave. As you see, it appears out of nowhere and is very high compared to the rest of the waves, being higher than the ship itself. Two characteristics that define monster waves very well. This would be of a baby category. They were created by waves that, as you have seen, were at most two meters high. But if such small waves can already create something like this, imagine in the middle of a storm in the Atlantic Ocean. And in the same way that monster waves are formed, monster holes are also formed, which are the opposite of sudden depressions in the sea level. Very focused, with several tens of meters of difference, perhaps even hundreds, that would swallow any ship that passed nearby. Their existence has been proven in the laboratory, but not yet in nature. Being, for the moment, sailor legends, we know nothing, perhaps because they are even more deadly than the waves. Thank you very much for watching the video, and goodbye.